everyone, my name is Tanya Vick and me and my fellow student Aurora Chun will be leading you through different features of the direct method in the language learning process. First of all, we will show you something about the historical background of the direct method. The direct method was created as a response to the grammar translation method. The linguists were frustrated about the process in the grammar translation method, so Francois Guin wanted to have the method that the learner could learn the second language in the same process as he does acquire the first language. However, during his lifetime, Francois Guin didn't have success with his ideas. At the beginning of the 20th century, Massimilian Berlitz and his grandson Charles Berlitz applied linguistics to these ideas and made the direct method famous. Hi, I'm Aurora and I'm gonna explain some of the features of the direct method. The first feature is the meaning is conveyed in target language, so translation is never allowed. So, for example, I have this. So the teacher of the direct method, they will say, Tagwa. Of course, the Korean direct method teacher, he will, he will say Tagwa instead of apple. And he wouldn't mention never, like, Tagwa is an apple. Okay? And the second one is grammar rules are taught inductively. What does inductive mean? Inductive is by students, they figure out by themselves the rules, by the explanations and the examples provided by the teacher. And the third rule is speech and listening comprehension are highlighted. So grammars and readings are not really emphasized by the teachers, so only listening and speaking. And the fourth rule is students are encouraged to think in target language. And the fifth is correct pronunciation and grammar are, are highly emphasized. I will be mentioning some more features of the direct method. Another feature is that the teacher teaches everyday vocabulary, something the students will really use, and sentences and phrases they will use in their everyday life. Next, the teacher uses realia and images. So if a German direct method teaching teacher shows this and wants to teach apple, the word for apple, apfel, he will show the image of an apple and explain and give, and give the word in German already, not in English. Another feature is that the teacher uses a lot of gestures and modeling and practice so that students can induce what the meaning of the words and the phrases are. So if the ideas are very abstract, the teacher uses associations so that the students can understand what is meant. To create better communication skills, the classes are small and intense. So teacher-student and student-student interactions are possible. These are frequently frequently done and there are a lot of questions and answers exercises so that students can apply the everyday language they are learning. Okay, now you're going to see two examples of direct method in Korean and in German. German. How to say hi in both languages. However, you wouldn't say to your students, now you learn how to say hi. You just do it like this. In Korean, it would be like this. Annyeonghaseyo. Annyeonghaseyo. Very good. You would do like gestures of this, or in German, like Hello. 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 Annyeonghaseyo. Annyeonghaseyo. And repeat and repeat and make the students incorporate. gonna talk about the strengths of the direct method. 
The first one is, as I mentioned, one of the features and characteristics of this method. The first one is speech and listening are emphasized. Since there are, there are a lot of activities like conversation, uh, asking and answering, so the speaking and listening comprehension are emphasized. Then the second one is students are involved actively and learn in a natural way. Since there is a lot of interaction between teacher and student and student student, there is a lot of interaction and a lot of movement, a lot of active stuff. Then the third one is learning is gradual and meaningful. What does gradual and meaningful mean? Is gradual is like step by step. You don't just jump like, oh, the water is really blue. You don't say that. It's like, hi, how are you? My name is Aurora. So that means like it's gradual. And um, students from dif different background can learn in the same environment. Since only target language is used, so they don't really have many problems like um, misunderstanding. So they can learn in the same environment. Then the last one is through demonstration and practice, there's a lot of variations. Since you use a lot of gesture, reality, and images, so variation in the teaching process is provided a lot. Aurora mentioned some strengths of the direct method and now I am going to talk about the weaknesses. First of all, since direct method emphasizes in speech and listening skills, the reading and writing skills in the second language are not that well trained. Second, the belief that the language 2 learning process is the same as the language 1 learning process is not true because the student already has gone through the language acquiring process in language 1. He only needs to learn a new language and it's not the same as a 1 acquiring process. The third weakness of the direct method is that even though the teacher uses a lot of realia, gestures and images, many times the explanations can become really time consuming. So why can't the teacher just translate one word instead of making five minute explanation in the target language and losing a lot of time? And the last weakness we want to mention now is that many times it is hard to find native speakers. So if the teacher is not a native speaker, it will be very hard for him to use the direct method. Can you tell me what the word is with me? That's the well done. What am I doing? What am I doing? Writing with your pen. Am I writing with your pen? Am I writing with your pen? No? No, you're not. Yeah, I'm writing with my pen. But you are writing. Your pen. Yeah, well done. Do we read with our eyes? Do we read with our eyes? Yes. yes we, we read, read with our, our eyes. eyes. Well done. Now we're going to now we're going to practice a new word. Can. 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 Okay. I can swim. I can walk. Can you tell me what the word can mean? Almost. Almost. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a finger and this is a toe. This is a finger and this is a toe. Can you tell me what the word toe means? First. Nah. No, no. Nah. Okay. So now we're going to practice questions using can you and the positive answer yes I can. Okay? Can you speak English? Can you speak English? Yes. I can speak English. Well done. Can you speak Slovak? Can you speak Slovak? Yes. yes. I, I can, can speak Slovak. Slovak. Yeah, well done. Can he read in English? Can he read in English? Yes, we can read in English. Okay. Can you touch your toes? Can you touch your toes? Yes, I can touch my toes. Yeah, well done. Can you spell the word low? Can you spell the word low? Yes. I, I can, can spell word the word low. low. Okay. Spell the word low, please. Okay. L O W. Yeah, well done. Can you answer my question? Can you answer my question? Yes. Yes. yes, I yes. can answer, answer my, 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 your, your, your question. question. Okay, can you repeat that again, please? Yes, yes I can, can answer. 
We will now contrast the direct method with the grammar translation method we have mentioned before. First of all, the direct method uses exclusively the target language. So the class is only in the target language. Whereas in the grammar translation method, there is little and sometimes almost no use of target language. Second, the direct method teaches everyday vocabulary and sentences, whereas the grammar translation method teaches isolated lists of words that do not have a relation with the everyday life of the students. Third point, the direct method tries to teach the grammar points and the grammar rules in, a, in an inductive way. The grammar translation method explains every rule, so it is totally deductively. Fourth difference, in the grammar translation method, the teaching goes through translation, whereas in the direct method, the teaching is through modeling and practice. The teacher-student relationship in the direct method is more personal because the teacher interacts with the students and also the students get to interact with each other. Whereas in the grammar translation method, the teacher directs whatever is happening in the classroom. Number six. The classroom of the direct method is open to students of different languages. Whereas in grammar translation method, the group is restricted because the students all have to speak the same mother tongue in order to be able to make the translation. Number seven, the correct pronunciation is emphasized in the direct method, whereas in the grammar translation method, there is no attention given to the pronunciation of the words. Now I will be mentioning the usefulness of the direct method. The first one is applying the target language would be really, really useful for those students who are learning direct method to get to know the correct structure, pronunciation, and the sound of the language. The second one is it is useful to those who are immersed in a society they, um, where they use the target language so they get to know the real pronunciation and the rules of the language through the modeling of the teacher and also as time goes by they are get they will be get to know and they will be able to think in target language this is all thank you guys i'm recording already no Sorry. and i know <laughs> <laughs> also <laughs> we will now contrast the... Mm. <laughs>